皆さんこんにちは。Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to now begin the 188th Ocean Forum. Today we are live streaming this event via YouTube and from the meeting room in Enoshima Yacht Harbor in Fujisawa City in Kanagawa Prefecture. Right now the temperature is 23 degrees C. We also saw、uh, the Mount Fuji、uh, with the snow on the top. In conjunction with the Norway Japan Sustainable Ocean Fest 2022, together with the、uh, Embassy of Norway in Japan, Jamstack, the Norwegian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Seafood from Norway, Innovation Norway, and Oshima Yacht Club, with their support and cooperation, we are meeting here to explore the ways to further expanding and deepening the partnership between Japan and Norway in the field of ocean. Let me introduce myself. I am Masanori Kobayashi of the OPRI. And now I would like to ask the speakers、uh, to address you at the outset. We have with us the Ms. Lene Aone, Mr. Ko Tanaka, and Mr. Hide Sakaguchi. So, first, I'd like to ask. Dr. Sakaguchi, to say a few words at the outset. Thank you. To keep speaking in Norwich,、uh, I am going to speak in, in, in English.、Uh, as was、uh, introduced, I am the president of the、uh, Ocean Policy Research Institute, Sasuka Peace Foundation. But at the same time, I am the chairman、uh, of the organizing committee of、uh, Norway Japan Sustainable Ocean Fest 2022. Then,、uh, before everything, I would like to welcome you all to join this wonderful event, Norway Japan Sustainable Ocean Fest 2022, for the next three days from today at、uh, beautiful Enoshima Island,、uh, which is shown in my background image. That's the small island. That is uh, the uh, Enoshima Island. You can see, I think, I hope.、Uh, what is、uh, Iconic at Enoshima Island for both Norwegian and Japanese.、Uh, that is、uh, at Enoshima, the sailing races of the Tokyo Olympics Games, not last year, but、uh, the Olympics Games in 1964 were held. And Norwegian King Harald V, at the time, of course,、uh, Crown Prince. Participated in the race, and Japanese royal family watched the race and applauded King Harald V. That is the initiation. And then later on, they met again at Enoshima Island and commemorated their friendship to initiate Norwegian King Cup yacht race here every year. And which will be, will be held、uh, from tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. And last year, 2021, we had second Tokyo Olympic Games again. And the sailing races were held at Enoshima again. And it was fantastic that Norwegian sailor Helman、uh, Tomsgaard. Won the bronze medal in men's、uh, laser class race. That is wonderful. And during the time of Tokyo Olympic last year, Norwegian King Cup yacht race was postponed and to restart and to commemorate for the 20th traditional race for the year 2022 this year, actually, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. The team members of、uh, Enoshima Yacht Club and the Norwegian Embassy in Tokyo started to think not just to continue it, but to add something new flavor 
for our future and for next generation to use our ocean, which must be sustainable, not only for yacht race, but also all the sectors to use this space, marine and ocean together in both countries, Norway and Japan, and not only for Norway and Japan, but for all over the world. Then I was asked to organize this event just because I am living in the small village shown in the background image, it, which is opposite to the, the Enoshima Island, the, 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 the coastal area of the, uh, the uh, in the in in Im image, which is my background. That is my you know, living place. And uh, one day, you know, I was asked by the chairman of uh, Enoshima uh, Yacht Club, uh, Mr. Tanaka, Tanaka-san asked me to do that. So that's, uh, that's it. But uh, at the same time, I am very lucky to be the uh, member of an uh, expert group of a uh, high-level panel of sustainable ocean economy, which was initiated by Norway and the Palau in 2018. And now Japan is a member country. Anyway, these are the stories to initiate this event, Norway, Japan, Sustainable Ocean Fest 2022. And among many events in next three days, today's event is a kickoff event, which is very special, a sort of a symposium to think about sustainable ocean from the viewpoint of public sector, private sector, and academic. This PPAP, public-private academic partnership, is one of the key issues to realize sustainable ocean. And another important issue is, uh, please keep it in mind that this symposium is fully supported by Ocean Policy Research Institute, Saska Peace Foundation, where uh, I am directing as a president. And that's why this symposium is called 180s Ocean Forum, which is our regular program. And that is uh, the, the mechanism, you know, we can fund and support this symposium. But of course, I myself and all the members of uh, Ocean Policy Research Institute are very happy to support this symposium today. And at last, I would like to give my deepest gratitude to team of Norwegian embassy in Tokyo, directed by Ambassador Inga Nihamal and all the team members. And also I would like to give my gratitude to the, the team of Enoshima Yacht Club, directed by the chairman, Mr. Tanaka, and also Kanaga Prefecture and all other partners, groups, and members for the great effort to cooperation to prepare and support this event. Susan Tak, please enjoy this symposium and also please enjoy whole event next three days. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Hide Sakaguchi. I was very impressed with his greeting in Norwegian language, and thank you for putting this meeting in the context of this Sustainable Ocean Fest. I have now pleasure to introduce uh, Ms. Rine Aune, Chargé uh, d'Affaires of the Embassy of Norway in Tokyo, to give us uh, opening remarks. Rine san please. Thank you so much, Kobayashi-san, and I was equally impressed by Sakaguchi-san's Norwegian, much better than my Japanese, I apologize. <laughs> so I would also like to kick off by thanking all our partners at this event, uh, the Yacht Club here in Enoshima, of course, for hosting us today, the Ocean Policy Research Institute for your great collaboration on this event and many others, um, and all the speakers that we are looking forward to hearing from today. So uh, let me just start by sharing a few thoughts about uh, Norway and our ocean policy. 
As mentioned before, Norway, together with Palau, started the high-level panel for sustainable ocean economy a couple of years ago, and we've been very lucky that Japan also joined the panel. So your Prime Minister is part of the panel's work, and Sakaguchi-san is one of the many experts who contribute to the panel, and the important work they do on giving recommendations on how to sustainably manage 100% of uh, our world's oceans, which is the ambition. So I say sustainable manage. Um, and so this panel provides valuable knowledge on how to achieve this goal on the sustainable management of the oceans. Um, another very important backdrop today's, to today's uh, symposium is, of course, the UN decade for uh, the oceans, which was proclaimed from last year until 2030 by the UN. Um, and this uh, decade is to gather more knowledge on, on the oceans and how to achieve particularly the SDG 14 on life below water. So the, the objective of the decade is not only to gather the knowledge but also look at how we can apply that into policy where uh, the governments that I represent uh, come in. From the Norwegian government side, we believe that everyone has a role to contribute to knowledge on the oceans. So we support both research companies and individuals to join the effort uh, to get more knowledge on, on the oceans. And here is a picture illustrating one of those many initiatives, which is the uh, Rev Ocean platform, which is currently building a new ocean-going research vessel in Norway. We also believe that we need uh, to sustainable operate and harvest the resources from the ocean. Uh, among many areas that Norway is active in is the offshore uh, solar, no, offshore wind power, um, and uh, of course other uh, fishery, uh, offshore petroleum, etc. And we really believe that uh, you need to operate um, and uh, sustainable manage the ocean activities. And this is one example of such a vessel coming up out from the maritime sector in Norway. Um, to finish off my remarks, I would like to give you this last picture from Norway, which is one of the ma many aquaculture farms that we have in Norway. Another illustration on how we believe that you need to sustainably manage the ocean resources to have enough food and resources for, the, uh, for our population to live off. And therefore, the scientists that we will hear from here today is so important on how we can sustainably manage the oceans for the future. So I look forward to hearing from all of you today and wish you the best of luck with today's symposium. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rina Arnesan, for your remarks, uh, and thank you for underlining the significance of our partnership for achieving sustainable ocean and sustainable ocean economy. We really look forward to continuing collaboration with you and the Embassy of Norway and the Government of Norway and the Norwegian colleagues. Next, we have with us Mr. Ko Tanaka, the chairman of the Enoshima Yacht Club. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ko Tanaka, chairman of Enoshima Yacht Club. Welcome to Enoshima. And welcome to this forum. And to the members of Norwegian Embassy, uh, led by uh, Ms. Uh, Lynn Aune, and uh, members of OPRI, we are glad to finally hold this meeting here today. As was touched upon by Dr. Sakaguchi, it was a year or more than a year ago that the, this plan came forward. You might wonder why we're meeting here uh, with uh, the member from Enoshima Yacht Club, as was mentioned. It dates back to 1964 at the time of the uh, first Tokyo Olympic Games. This club was created to host the uh, sailing uh, the sports, and uh, back then, the representing Norway, uh, the 
then uh, the crown uh, prince and now the king of Norway was a part of uh, the participating that competition back then. Uh, the Emperor Emeritus uh, was uh, back then the crown prince, and uh, they enjoy the uh, friendship. And then several uh, years later, uh, the, the king and queen of Norway came to visit Japan, and uh, then he expressed his desire to come back to uh, Enoshima. Ever since uh, the, uh, they have been enjoying uh, the deepening the friendship, uh, together with the uh, then emperor and empress of Japan. And we had a pleasure and honor of greeting them here. And in the following year, the, what is called the Viking Trophy uh, was uh, the presented to us uh, from then ambassador of Norwegian embassy. And Norway friendship yep, race started uh, ever since, and we spent two days prior to Golden Week and, uh, in 2022. This year, we uh, celebrate the 20th anniversary of this race. And this commemorative race uh, to the uh, Norwegian Embassy and the Dr. Sakaguchi, who is also the member of the Yacht Club, he consulted with them. And uh, we thought of uh, planning uh, this event uh, to uh, represent both sustainable ocean economy and the yacht race. Of course, Dr. Sakaguchi an expert. And uh, in our case, our activity is centered around ocean, and we have a great interest in ocean. And therefore, we thought this is going to be a great opportunity to learn about the ocean. And also, we thought this is going to be the great step forward for us. And Dr. Sakaguchi kindly agreed. And first, uh, we decided to create a bond among those concerned. And the new way is the most advanced uh, the country, among others in the field of SDGs and uh, blue economy, among others. And we thought uh, they are going to be the great partner for us to learn from. So this is going to be the uh, learning opportunity and then hand over the knowledge and insights that we received to the next generation. This is a three-day event. And uh, this is not just for discussion and present a report. Rather, this is going to be the kickoff. That is, what we're going to do in the following day, that's the question that we are faced with. Creating a bond, that is crucial. And uh, sailing sector and the members in the sailing sector, uh, we are endeavoring for better environment in the ocean. And therefore, um, we want to consider what we can do on our part. Uh, we are sailing offshore. Uh, there must be activities that we can do offshore. And uh, we also talked uh, with Dr. Sakaguchi that uh, we should also include other stakeholders, including the, the fisher, uh, fishermen's community, as well as uh, the, 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 the cruise liners that are operating in offshore. And therefore, starting next year, uh, those stakeholders could be also involved in this uh, kind of event. We are the, a group of individual uh, sailing lovers, and therefore, where there is a world, uh, there is a lot that we can do, like, for instance, sampling. So uh, this is uh, going to be the event that we declare that we want to uh, do something for the ocean. I believe you are also the members uh, who love ocean and hope that we'll be part of that uh, the group of friendship. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, touching us, uh, the uh, Enoshima, and uh, it's uh, the connection with the Imperial Household uh, of Japan and its history. Uh, once again, uh, let us express our, our round of applause uh, to opening session uh, speakers, uh, Dr. Sakaguchi, uh, Ms. Ane, and uh, Mr. Tanaka. Without much further ado, we'd like to move on to the first uh, session uh, on blue economy, blue carbon, excuse me. 
United Nations Environment uh, Program, uh, the, in its report in 2009, they used the word blue carbon for uh, the uh, carbon uh, in uh, the stored in the, the seagrass beds and the shallow water areas, and uh, internationally, uh, the uh, use of uh, the uh, blue carbon has been identified as the important uh, the sink uh, and the important uh, the ocean ecosystem. And the programs uh, and the efforts are underway as well on this island, uh, Enoshima. And uh, the first, I'd like to uh, invite uh, the. Uh, Mr. Junichiro Furusawa, uh, Umi Sakura. Hi. Uh, konnichiwa. Good afternoon. I was cleaning the beach up until the uh, last moment, and therefore, although I was originally planning to wear the uh, the formal suit, I uh, came here without uh, changing my dress. Since 2005, they have been proclaiming uh, the, uh, that uh, we should be the number one beach cleaner in Japan. And uh, I hear that the sea dragon uh, once uh, resided in this water. We want, to, we want them to come back uh, with a better environment. And uh, when uh, we ask uh, or call for picking up the waste and litters on the beach that people may not be uh, very much interested in, uh, then we decided to uh, combine this event uh, to add uh, the fact of fun, like, for instance, sumo wrestlers or uh, the, uh, the the rock concert, rocking, uh, rock, uh, the music concert as well. And uh, also we're enjoying the, uh, the relationship uh, with uh, our counterpart in uh, Nordic countries as well. And in fact, uh, the, in order to restore the sea environment, uh, we realized that the, not just the, the clean the beach is not enough. Uh, near uh, Nishiura Port, together with the uh, fishery, fishery Cooperative Union and uh, the Fishermen uh, the Association, the residents in Enoshima, we got together to decide uh, what is necessary to improve the environment. And we also conducted genetic studies, and uh, we failed again and again. But finally, we found out that the cuttlefish came to uh, the, the for spawning. So uh, the, even when the our achievement was not recognized by the, the human's eyes, cuttlefish recognized that. And the seagrass is growing here thanks to our efforts. We hope that eventually the sea is filled with seagrass and other seaweeds. And for the first time in 10 years, we recognize that uh, the water temperature is down in Sagami Bay. And we hope that that would also help the growing the seagrass and seaweed. This is our 17th year since uh, the beach cleaning activities. We want to create eventually the seagrass forest here. We ask for your cooperation and support. Thank you. Mr. Furusawa, thank you very much indeed. Uh, the activities, uh, they have sometimes uh, they have difficulty uh, due to the uh, typhoons and also the uh, warming of uh, the sea waters. Uh, I hope that uh, the sea temperature has been a little bit uh, declining. Uh, the good news. The next speaker is uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Yuma Yamamoto, or Japan a business developer of uh, Uninomics Company Limited. You have the floor. Thank you very much. My name is uh, the Yamamoto of uh, Uninomics. Uh, it's not great uh, that I have been given this opportunity to speak to you. I'd like to use my first slide. Uh, so uh, I represent uh, the Uninomics uh, the company. Uh, we uh, globally. Uh, the starts the uh, the uh, the uh, fattening of uh, the uh, urchin uh, in order to combat uh, to, uh, in order to help restore kelp forests and uh, we started uh, the uh, activities uh, the in the, the 2011 after the uh, Great Japan East uh, earthquake and uh, we also the uh, cover Norway, the North America, Australia and New Zealand in addition to the uh, various parts of Japan. Well, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the sea bottom is uh, the severely uh, damaged, 
what's called the denudation of the sea grass bed in any parts of the world, uh, primarily due to the sea uh, temperature uh, rise due to the uh, climate change. And uh, the uh, urchins have been at the, uh, uh, the eating out, eating up all the, uh, the uh, seagrass bed, as you can see at the bottom. So you see uh, the sea bottom is covered uh, with uh, the urchin. It's a desertification of the sea bottom uh, without uh, any uh, seagrass bed. Of course, uh, the, you might think that the eating uh, with the the uh, sea urchin, but uh, as you can see on the uh, right uh, the, uh, bottom, the sea urchins are uh, the uh, harvested in this in this uh, the uh, kind of situation. It has no uh, the meat inside, so it's, uh, it doesn't produce any profit uh, for fishers. In order to help uh, solve this problem, uh, we started uh, the, uh, 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 the uh, breeding. Uh, the uh, urchin uh, taken from uh, these uh, the sea bottom. So because of the denudation of uh, the uh, sea bottom, uh, we first uh, remove uh, the urchin, and then uh, these uh, collected urchins uh, are uh, collected uh, uh, in the, the dedicated uh, the water and the tanks uh, with the technology uh, they uh, learned from uh, Norwegian uh, the aquaculture. Uh, so the urchin and so now uh, have a rich meat inside, and uh, we sell uh, these urchins, and uh, the proceeds uh, turned back. Uh, to the activities in uh, for uh, removing uh, urchins. And uh, we have been doing this in Oita Prefecture as well. And so now, throughout this year, uh, we are able to uh, the distribute, sell and distribute uh, uh, urchins. Now, uh, for blue carbon, uh, together with uh, NAO's holdings, uh, we I've been uh, the, uh, working with them uh, the for blue uh, carbon through uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the greening or the for uh, greening of the AC bottom. And so uh, we'd like to have uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, numbers, uh, the measurements, uh, so that uh, our results uh, can be seen through numbers. So we are now collaborating with uh, NAOs in order to establish a methodology uh, so that we can uh, quantify uh, the results of our activities. Now, about the United Nations uh, the a decade uh, of the ocean uh, science. And uh, in fact, uh, the United Nations uh, formally uh, the, uh, endorsed our activity as part of this uh, the, uh, decade. Uh, so there are only uh, three private uh, companies uh, the, amongst uh, the, these uh, the, uh, certifications. And uh, we are the only uh, private company in Japan with the United Nations uh, the certification. And, uh, uh, we are uh, recognized as uh, in exam uh, exemplary uh, activities. Uh, we wish to establish a business model which can be um, spread uh, throughout the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. You shared with us very interesting business model. Hope that we can come back and ask you some questions. Next speaker is working with me, who is studying uh, the blue economy. And uh, last week, we went together to Palau. Uh, that is Dr. Atsushi Watanabe of OPRI. Good afternoon. I am Watanabe of uh, OPRI, Ocean Policy Research Institute. Our organization is also focusing on blue carbon uh, what we can do uh, with uh, blue carbon, especially in conjunction with climate change, and to us, how we can improve the ocean environment, and how we can involve uh, people that are involved in uh, various activities at the ocean. And as was mentioned by Mr. Kobayashi, 
uh, up until uh, the two weeks ago, we were in Palau uh, to attend our ocean session. And one of the, uh, or our, the, our ocean conference, rather. And uh, there was a session that uh, talked about uh, the climate change and climate crisis. And then speakers uh, from India, Costa Rica, and then Marshall Islands, I think. And they refer to blue carbon again and again, uh, showing the rising interest uh, in global community as well. In Japan, when it comes to blue carbon, Japan is one of the advanced nations, as Mr. Yamamoto of Uninomics stated, the seagrass and the seaweed, uh, the area coverage is declining about how we can improve that so that uh, we can gain credit uh, to uh, get funding uh, for various activities. City of Yokohama is engaged in their project of seagrass restoration as well as uh, the macroalgal farming. So they are one of the most advanced uh, the municipalities in Japan. And then in 2020, Japan Blue Economy Association was created. And the Ocean Policy Research Institute as well as the Sasakawa Peace Foundation are members of this association. And JBlue Credit is one of the major activities under this association. What has been uh, practiced uh, by the, uh, the Yokohama City is now developed into a more systemic uh, attempt. And since the fiscal year 2020, uh, the actual credit system, the credit trading system was introduced. Uh, there, the price would fluctuate. And there will be the auction to uh, provide the credit to the uh, the, the industry uh, that placed the highest uh, the price. And Yokohama Kobe Port and Tokuyama in Yamaguchi, and then Kita Kyushu. Those four ports were engaged in the uh, the J Blue credit demonstration projects. About 33 companies and organizations were involved. And for those people that would uh, generate credit, that is, uh, that are in charge of the conservation and uh, restoration activities, the two. Uh, help them understanding about the system, uh, we uh, introduce the guideline. Uh, right now, it is only in Japanese, but hope that we can spread this information further to encourage uh, the activities, as in the case of Norway, where they're engaged in the uh, seaweed uh, the growing project. Uh, there are some similarities, commonalities between two uh, sides, and hope that uh, we can learn uh, from each other for better result. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Watanabe, thank you very much. Uh, the uh, blue carbon based uh, the, uh, the carbon uh, the credit system in Japan uh, the, is said to be uh, spread uh, throughout Japan. So, so that, that uh, we hope uh, that will be a uh, successful case uh, that uh, uh, Japan uh, can uh, offer to the world. And uh, on our way, uh, we met there are many high school students, and uh, there are some of them, uh, in fact, in this hall. And uh, Umi Sakura has been uh, very ingenious, uh, ingenious uh, in uh, collect, uh, the gathering uh, the debris and the beach beautification, and also the engaging, involving uh, their young people. Do you have any specific plans, or do you have any other difficulties that you could share with us? Well, uh, the uh, the uh, litter or the garbage, well, uh, it can uh, differ from place to place. But uh, in this area, Sagami uh, city, uh, the garbage uh, the, uh, mainly come from uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the river or the, uh, the communities uh, the flowing into the sea. 
uh, it's uh, we need to aware that they uh, raise the awareness of uh, the people of this fact, and uh, the uh, the amamo or the eel grass. Uh, the, uh, we need to uh, cope with uh, the uh, natural changes, uh, the weather, typhoons, and uh, the uh, changing uh, the flows. So uh, with these uh, difficulties uh, at hand, uh, we need to uh, restore uh, the uh, sea horses and as well as uh, restoring uh, the uh, eel grass beds. Thank you. Now, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Yamamoto about the business model. Well, uh, the sea urchin cabbage or the cabbage, uh, the fed, uh, the sea urchin uh, in uh, this uh, part of uh, the prefecture. Well, uh, the difficulty is uh, the uh, how to uh, they have uh, the a very high quality sea urchin with uh, a lot of meat inside. And uh, so, uh, but uh, you said that uh, you have learned uh, from uh, Norwegian the aquaculture technology. So, uh, would you please uh, the elaborate on that? How did you actually uh, learn from uh, uh, Norway? And uh, what your, is your success or the, what is your difficulty that you are still encountering? <laughs> Well, in our case, the, we uh, learned technology from the National Institute. I understand that in the case of Norway, it was uh, back in the 1990s that uh, the denudation uh, became a major problem. But uh, the Norwegian people uh, do not uh, enjoy eating uh, sea urchin, and therefore the technology itself was introduced from Norway to Japan and then. Uh, the uh, the the feed production, the feedstock production, uh, that is uh, the imported from Norway. And in fact, uh, we want to really produce uh, the delicious sea urchin. Many people would love eating sea urchin from Hokkaido. The reason why that is because uh, there is uh, the very tasty, the the good flavor, uh, the kelp uh, that is growing in the sea of Hokkaido. And therefore, we thought of utilizing uh, the part of the kelp, uh, utilizing technology from Norway uh, to produce a good feed uh, that would be given to sea urchin. I remember going to Hawaii and uh, abalone was uh, the produced there as a part of aquaculture. And they were also uh, working on production of the tasty feed made from the seaweed. And out of the technology, patent was applied. And for production of uh, the seaweed technology, they require the expertise and uh, scientific knowledge, as I understand. And therefore, uh, that's another area that uh, the, there will be more improvement here in Japan by learning from Norway. Technology coming from Norway would be utilized uh, here for uh, improving the eelgrass or seagrass, uh, the, the forest, and uh, the uh, sea urchin aquaculture. In Palau, yes, uh, the, I felt the same way as you about the seagrass bed. We had uh, the in-depth uh, discussions uh, about that. And uh, I th we had thought that uh, the Japan had uh, a lot of uh, the knowledge about it, but uh, actually, uh, the, uh, the people uh, in other countries uh, had uh, more uh, energetic about uh, discussing and uh, the exploring more about the uh, use or the restoration of uh, the uh, seagrass bed. And uh, how do you think that uh, the, uh, our uh, success is, uh, uh, can be uh, proliferated to other countries? And, uh, well, in fact, uh, I was also the struck uh, by the passion uh, that the, of uh, the, uh, or the people uh, the working for the restoration of uh, the e secret spirit and uh, the, uh, in other uh, countries. And uh, Japan is the uh, leader of uh, the e uh, the science and uh, the exploitation of uh, the e blue carbon. And so 
I think that uh, we need to collaborate more with uh, the, these sort of passionate people of, uh, around the world uh, so that uh, this uh, the success uh, can be at a more uh, can be uh, offered more uh, so that other countries that can utilize it and we need to share uh, such uh, the uh, successful stories and uh, the uh, lessons uh, the, uh, the so that uh, the uh, uh, other people uh, can be more successful. Uh, thank you very much. I hope to have uh, the other opportunities uh, to discuss this more so that uh, the uh, people in Japan uh, can be more informed about this. And uh, I look forward to collaborate, uh, collaborations uh, in the future. So are there any, I hope but the uh, uh, people in this uh, hall and also the people participating online uh, could send us other uh, questions and the comments. Uh, colleagues from Embassy of Norway, uh, uh, Lina San, uh, or Marianne San, do, do you have anything? Okay. Um, I would like to ask uh, a question to Archonomics which I think is uh, such an interesting idea to take an environmental challenge and make it into a business opportunity. But can you really make money from such a venture? This, this is, I think, what everybody thinks. Yes, you can do good, but it will only cost you. But can you actually make it profitable and export it to other countries and expand so that it can be actually a sustainable business from a business point of view as well? Thank you. Yeah, profitability of the business. If you can elaborate on that. Yes. Uh, as uh, we are the uh, private sector company, we are not NPO. We are for profit organization. Therefore, uh, our mission is to generate profit through our operation. Well, it was only last year that we finally started the full scale commercialization of the project. And according to our business plan, we consider we can generate profit and then uh, continue our operation. At least the plan is there. You may know that the sea urchin is very popular as a part of sushi, not only in Japan, but also in the rest of the world as well. Therefore, demand is uh, the growing. And uh, due to the uh, denudation of uh, the, the sea, uh, the tasty sea urchin, sea urchin is not produced, and therefore, if we can produce a tasty, delicious sea urchin, then that would lead to uh, good business, not only in Japan, but also for the, uh, the rest of the world. That's what we are planning. Thank you, Mr. Yamamoto. Hello. Yes, uh, it is really a challenge that uh, even in the cabbage uh, sea urchin in the Mira uh, Peninsula, um, they say that uh, this uh, the meat inside of the sea urchin is much less than the one you can find in Hokkaido. And also the flavor, uh, if you feed them uh, with a cabbage after leaf, uh, it doesn't really have the original flavor either. So these are the challenges. Some say that uh, uh, it's better to have not so strong flavor, but some say that uh, they like to have a strong flavor of sea urchin. So these are the, some of the consumer preference that we also have to handle. But and I hope that uh, um, Yamamoto-san can further explore the uh, new business model uh, so they can produce a good sea urchin that can meet the flavor of the consumers, preference of the consumers, and uh, make a good profit and uh, demonstrate a good business model. Once again, thank you very much for three panelists. Let's give a big round of applause to three panelists. So, just signing the Katana, Doma, Ariato Zamasta. So, there are Tsukimaste, Daini session. I'd like to now move on to the next session. It is a session about the ocean plastic. Okay, we also have speakers representing business sector as well as science. So first we have Mr. Akio Sakamoto, the executive director of Umi Otsukuru, the Sea Beautification Society. Once you're ready, if you can start your presentation, please. 
Yes, sir, I'm ready. My name is Sakamoto of Umi o Tsukurukai or the Sea Beautification Society. It is a great pleasure for me to be able to join in today. So since uh, we are meeting on Enoshima Island, let me uh, talk with you what uh, we are doing on this island, Enoshima. I'm going to use uh, some slide. In Shonan port, uh, next to uh, the Yacht Harbor, so the already eight times uh, we collect uh, uh, garbage uh, in water. So when we jump into uh, the sea, uh, well, the sea bottom is about uh, five meters. So we jump into the sea, and as you can see on the right what we call eggy ball, that is uh, the uh, the uh, tangled uh, plastic uh, fishing nets and uh, fake bite, a uh, fake bait, what we call eggy. So uh, this uh, the, uh, uh, took about uh, one year uh, to grow into this, and uh, there are about uh, the 300 to 500 uh, fake baits. Uh, inside of this uh, the uh, entangled uh, fishing gear and the fishing nets and uh, mostly uh, the uh, weights uh, fishing weights uh, it weighs about uh, the as much as uh, the uh, 20 uh, kilograms so these are uh, the bits and the pieces that are entangled together to grow into uh, this size after 12 months in Shonan port uh, it is uh, what we call mecca of fishers, and uh, the fishing weight on the right, on the left, and uh, sometimes uh, the as many as 8,000 fishing weights are uh, collected uh, with, uh, in uh, an hour. And uh, the, uh, even today, we often uh, the, uh, gather 15,000 uh, fishing weights. So even after we collect uh, so many, uh, the, we encounter uh, these uh, the many as well. Mostly these weights are made of lead. So we need, we'd like to uh, completely uh, the, uh, eliminate uh, these fishing weights from the sea bottom. And uh, the trap tires are found as well. And uh, uh, there are no uh, the punctures. Uh, there sometimes uh, the uh, punctured the tires are thrown into uh, the uh, or left on the uh, sea bottom. But uh, on this particular tire, there are no punctures. So it is uh, the clearly the illegal dumping of this uh, truck tire. And so uh, we uh, tie the rope around it. And so we. Uh, the uh, removed it uh, from the sea, uh, five meters sea bottom. So, and uh, sometimes uh, we collect uh, 20 to uh, 30 truck tires like this. And uh, this is the photos underwater. As you can see on the left, uh, this is the uh, normal uh, the uh, visibility. Sometimes uh, we have no visibility, but uh, usually uh, we see uh, three meters ahead in the water. And on the right, is, uh, this is uh, the basket for fishing. Uh, apparently, baits were uh, in this uh, the basket. Uh, it is uh, left on the sea bottom, so we collected it as well. This is uh, the one with the, uh, the e e liters uh, that we collect. And uh, on the left, uh, you see uh, the e, uh, uh, jumble of uh, the e fake uh, the e baits. And uh, several years ago, uh, after a huge uh, the typhoon, well, uh, these are uh, the fences uh, from the, uh, the coast, uh, on the coast, uh, were also uh, uh, flown or blown uh, into uh, the sea. And uh, we uh, the, uh, collected about 80 or 90 percent of them, but uh, still uh, some were, uh, some remain on the sea bottom. 
in uh, Shonan uh, Vision University and uh, the uh, other groups are a part of uh, the, our partners. And so we collect uh, the, we use ropes and uh, we collect, uh, we uh, lift up uh, the, these uh, the garbage uh, from the sea bottom. And uh, this is uh, the, really uh, the physical work. And uh, we were informed that, that uh, part of the uh, sea coast uh, was uh, the eroded. So it might be difficult for us uh, to uh, do what we did uh, last year. But it really depends on how uh, the, uh, that particular part of the coast uh, is uh, restored. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sakamoto. And uh, the, I'm impressed today for your uh, cleaning of the uh, sea bottom uh, in uh, Enoshima. Uh, I think uh, it is a lot of uh, it takes a lot of patience on your part. Next speaker is Mr. Tatsuhiko Kashimura of the Refine Refine Verse Group. Now over to you, Mr. Kashimura. Good afternoon. It so happened that my father used to work for a Norwegian company for many years. And uh, when I reported to my father that I'm going to be speaking on this occasion, he was so happy. He was uh, even happier than I was. So I really found that uh, there is such a coincidence. Our company is the, the mainly centered around uh, Tokyo that is engaged in industrial waste uh, the treatment. We believe that the waste would could be tra uh, processed into the raw material, and therefore we engaged in recycling activities. What is called a carpet tile, that is a 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter carpet tile that is f that used to fill uh, the uh, floor of the office uh, buildings, is what we are trying to uh, recycle back to the uh, carpet tile again. The, every year, there uh, is about 20,000 tons of uh, the, the tiles that are uh, disposed of, and uh, they could be processed back to tiles again. And also, uh, we collect uh, the fishing net, uh, that is a used fishing net. And uh, when they are collected, as we have just heard, uh, it is dirty, and uh, therefore, the, that hampers the recycling activities, and uh, so we have to remove them, the litters uh, that are entangled, and then trying to reprocess it back to a fishing net or other products. This uh, project was started three years ago, and uh, the cumulative uh, 600 to 800 the tons of uh, fishing nets were collected. Uh, which are now processed into various products, including airbag for the cars. For instance, uh, airbags also that could be collected uh, from the, uh, the the old cars, the Swiss cars. And uh, every year, about 1,000 tons. And in the case of fishing net, about 300 tons every year are processed and uh, the, the new products are produced. In the case of fishing net, uh, there are about 6,000 tons uh, annually that are produced and uh, then disposed of in Japan. I know that there are other reprocessing industries in Europe. The conventionally, there are cases where the, the used nets from Japan were exported to countries like China, and then they were used and eventually disposed of and reprocessed. But we thought of uh, the reprocessing them here in Japan uh, because they were first used in Japan. And also, uh, we heard about the business, the viability as a business. Well, we finally turned to black after two years of operation, and I'm responsible for this uh, business, and I'm glad that we can f produce a profit. In fact, uh, the, to make it a viable business, it is really challenging, but it has to be sustainable from business point of view. Otherwise, recycling business uh, would not be sustained. And therefore, we are the introducing various ideas and uh, trying to control costs so that we can uh, produce uh, the profit. Well, out of uh, 6,000 tons of uh, the waste nets, uh, what we are processing could be about 300 or 400 tons. 
but uh, if we can increase it to about 1,000 tons and uh, we consider that uh, the main operation has to be located in Hokkaido, that is a major consumer of fishing net. So if we can recycle 6,000 tons of uh, used fishing net here in Japan and then process them back into new products, that would make uh, the sustainable business. Thank you. Mr. Kashihara, I think you are a regular speaker in our uh, working group. I understand that you are now making uh, this business profitable. I'm sure this is going to be the very exciting business. The next speaker is uh, Mr. Uh, Sony Sodabak, uh, the uh, president of uh, the Tomura Japan Limited. Do you have the floor? Uh, so I'm Sony Soderberg of Tomura Japan. Uh, Tomura is a Norwegian company. It was started in 1972, so it's a 50-year anniversary, anniversary uh, this year. Uh, Tomura is about leading the resource revolution. When I say that, uh, resources, we consider that everything that humanity needs to sustain itself. So in our company, we can never say um, garbage or waste. We talk about resources. Uh, and that is everything from uh, food to plastics to aluminum, steel, glass, anything. Um, and and uh, being uh, resource revolutionaries is what, what we are doing, basically. So uh, let me see here. I'm going to. So talking about what we do in Japan, so uh, overall, Tomra is, is um, uh, basically um, a company in uh, sensor technology. So we use te sensor technologies to, to sort out and collect materials to make sure the best materials that are possible to recycle are picked up and used in the best and most productive way. Uh, and in Japan, we, we focus then on collection of used uh, beverage containers. So it's pet bottles, cans, uh, glass bottles, and, and those kind of things. Uh, and the way we do it, um, we com come into Japan from the outside, and Japan already has a very good uh, recycling system, a very good culture when it comes to taking care of resources. What we can do is add a little bit of an extra merit to that in, in that we engage consumers. So having consumers, uh, for example, in the case of pet balls, uh, wash the bottles, take off the label, the cap, bring it to the stores and collect it or bring it back to the store. Uh, doing that, you, you have an engaged public that bring the best material. Um, and we also believe in economy and environment has to go hand in hand. So what we do is to, to give an incentive to consumers when they bring their material. So it could be uh, supermarkets, uh, loyalty cards like Waon or Nanako, as you can see on, on the graph on the left-hand side there. Uh, consumers bring the bottles, they get points, uh, and then we collect the material and transport it in an environmentally friendly way, uh, take the material to recycler, and then the recycler uh, basically recycle the material and then new product is made. So, so there is um, uh, what we call a clean loop uh, of recycling uh, where, where we get the best material uh, possible. Uh, so so in, in Tomra, for example, we, we collect about 15,000 tons of PET every year. So it's still only 2.5% of pet bottles uh, used in Japan every year. So uh, in Japan, it's 600,000 tons produced. Uh, almost all of it is collected either via municipalities or our machines or in, in supermarkets or next to um, uh, vending machines and so on. Uh, but we believe if you take care of the material in the right way, you have higher value material and, and then uh, the loop will be closed and you avoid things going out being, for example, incinerated or lost in, in outside in, in nature or, in worst case, ending up in, in the ocean. Uh, so, th so that is the short story. So uh, what you see on the right-hand side is a couple of examples where you have on the top there uh, somebody using our machines in a convenience store and at the bottom at in, in, in a supermarket. 
So that, that's basically how, how it looks. Uh, today we have about 15, 1700 of these machines in Japan. Uh, a lot of them in Kawasaki City, for example, if, if you live close by. Uh, and, and so we hope this gonna uh, increase so that you can engage consumers uh, rather than having municipalities spend a lot of uh, effort and, and cost on collecting. So uh, yeah, I, I think that's the short story. Uh, we do a lot of things outside of that as well, but think of us as taking care of pet balls, basically. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sony Soderberg. Uh, very interesting uh, business model, and uh, yeah, I'd like to ask a few more questions um, right after uh, this as well. Um, now then, I'd like to ask some questions, our panelists. So first, Mr. Sakamoto of Umi o Tsukuru Kai. How to make your activities sustainable? Uh, that's a question uh, one of the most frequently asked, especially about the cleaning activities both inside and the water and uh, the bottom of the sea. The how to fund the operation, that's another important part. If you have uh, any impressions or any uh, thoughts that you can share with us. Yes. Including Tokyo Bay and also five lakes around uh, Mount Fuji in Yamanashi Prefecture, or even in Miyagi Prefecture, uh, the port of Kamaishi, Iwate or Niigata. Those are prefectures and places that we have so far visited. Every time there could be different sponsors. Of course, there are operations that we sponsor, but uh, there could be various patterns of supporters uh, that would uh, help us fund our activities. Uh, sometimes we might apply for a subsidy in Mi Iwate and Miyagi prefectures, northern part of Japan which were hit by uh, the, the Great East Japan, Japan earthquake. The, with the subsidy, again, uh, we use that uh, for removing the, uh, those, uh, the, the, the remnants of uh, the damages by the earthquake. So depending on places and depending on the projects, the supporting organizations and funding organizations could be different. Thank you, Mr. Sakamoto. I understand that you're working with different organizations in different places. Hope that your activities would further develop and hope that your cleaning activities would be successful. Or I would say that uh, there won't be any more need for cleaning up the beaches and the, the sea. In fact, uh, to do that, we have to prevent how we can uh, uh, how we can prevent the inflow of garbage is waste into the ocean. Uh, next, I'd like to ask you, uh, Mr. Kashimura. Apparently, your business uh, in Japan is uh, growing uh, very steadily. Uh, so what is your plan from now on in Japan, as well as uh, the other countries, East Asia and uh, the Southeast Asia? Do you have any plans to go into these uh, regions and uh, countries in the future? Yes, uh, the technology is important, and uh, how to, uh, in, in order to improve uh, the quality of the recycled material, and uh, as uh, the, uh, Mr. Soderberg said, uh, how to uh, collect. That's uh, the the key, and uh, the establishing mechanism of uh, the collection is important. And uh, another thing is uh, the is to talk with the, the uh, fishers and uh, establish uh, good relations with them uh, by going uh, the, the one uh, fishing village or fishing port uh, and another. And uh, that way, uh, we need to build a network in Japan. But uh, what about uh, other countries? Of course, uh, the entire system uh, is uh, important, uh, but uh, perhaps uh, we might uh, need to uh, change what we have been successful in Japan. And, uh, and uh, 
and but uh, we hope to have uh, um, a successful uh, the implementation of uh, the business model in other countries but uh, the how to successfully collect materials uh, in other countries can be different from what we practice uh, in Japan uh, thank you very much so perhaps you need to adapt uh, yourself to different uh, situations uh, in other countries Tony Soderberg uh, for your uh, operations as well and uh, I see this uh, pet bottle recycle as a main uh, business activities of your company but I'm just curious uh, there are other plastic related package packaging materials that also require some recycling how do you plan to apply your business model to promote uh, collection and recycling of other packaging material. This is the first question. And the second question is also uh, probably for Asia and some other overseas countries. They may also require uh, such an investment in promoting uh, systems to promote recycling. And how Tomura uh, as a group look at uh, some other foreign countries as a potential business uh, opportunity as well. May I ask you to elaborate on this? Uh, certainly, it, it's a very good question. So uh, we, we look at these problems uh, on a global scale. Of course, in Japan, we can only work for 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 Japan, but uh, on a global scale, we look at, especially as you mentioned, other types of plastics. Pet policy is only one fraction of this, but the total of uh, what what we call municipal solid waste is is the big problem because there you have everything mixed up, uh, not only badly designed products, but also badly designed products mixed up with other badly designed products that are very difficult to, to recycle. So what we do with our sensing technologies, we also have sorting machines, which can be used at uh, recycling plants where the material comes in and with different types of yeah, technologies, they are sorted, for, you know, pa paper, plastic, different color of plastic, and so on. So that, that's the way we can uh, contribute uh, to this. Uh, on a global or Asian scale, uh, a lot of things are happening in Asia right now, actually. So uh, to collect pet balls using our machines, uh, the best way is to have a deposit system. What that means is that uh, the user or the consumer, they pay 10 yen extra on a pet bottle. And they drink the bottle, the, the contents, and they bring the bottle back to the store and they get 10 yen. That is the very best way to collect uh, pet balls. Uh, in Europe, we have about 40% collection rate uh, in countries without deposit. When you start deposit system, you get 95% collection almost immediately. Why? It's because of the money. It's always about the money. So we try to give incentives for people to, to uh, engage themselves as consumers, to to uh, help out with, with, with the collection and, and recycling. Uh, and the best examples in, in Asia, I mean, Japan, as I mentioned, 95% uh, collection of pet balls and so on already without deposit. Uh, but, but you have uh, Australia, you will have a deposit system in Singapore from uh, next year. And that will also take deposit uh, collection rates up to close to 90%, I'm, I'm, I'm sure about that. So, so, so we do what we can. Uh, we cannot do any, everything, but where we can help to give advice to ministries, governments, about the best ways to handle the resources, we, we do whatever we can, can here, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sony Soderberg, for your elaboration. And when we were in Palau last week, uh, Palau is a uh, small island country that doesn't necessarily have these recycling capabilities. So they collect uh, like uh, aluminium cans and they have to ship it to Taiwan uh, for the recycling. Uh, for remote islands, they don't have any facility. So they just keep piling up uh, in the backyard. Uh, so this is a kind of growing problems uh, in uh, small island countries such as Palau as well. Uh, so we hope that we can find uh, kind of systems where we can integrate such countries in uh, a bit wider recycling systems uh, as well. Uh, thank you for your remarks.
So I now like to open the floor. えー、それでは、ご質問、ご意見などを皆さん。エノシマ、オーダーオーディエンス、フォー、ウォッチング、アワー、ストリーミング、エニワン、ウォーハズ、エニコメント、アクエスション、アイエス、プリス、マリアンさん。Thank you very much.、Um, I just wonder, any of you who wants to answer,、um, what would be your recommendation for young Students or young people, young people in the beginning of their career to contribute to this、uh, transition of、uh, thinking circularity and, and、uh, yeah, helping the ocean. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. あの若者の人たちにどういうふうな協力を求めていったらいいのかその循環型社会その生みごみ Yes, I know that you establish circularity. Do you have any recommendations that, that、uh, young people can do, including students or the young career professionals? Well, I think、uh, the high school students、uh, might be busy、uh, to prepare for the college entrance exam, but perhaps、uh, the college students are more、uh, interested in our activities and also they are more、uh, aware of、uh, the ocean environment. But unfortunately, the moment they graduate and join a company, well, they Disappear. They don't come back to us. So when they started、uh, as、uh, career professionals after graduation, perhaps、uh, they should、uh, try to make time to do something for the ocean、uh, environment. But unfortunately,、uh, many of these、uh, young people don't have much perhaps, time or energy to do so. Well, in the late、uh, 20s or the early 30s, well, it's likely that、uh, they will come back. But、uh, once they、uh, left us, Well, it might be difficult for them, apparently, to come back to us. With us, for example, the youngest member is a college student. And then、uh, the others are the people, people in their 30s and older.、Uh, we focus on scuba diving because、uh, we clean up the uh, uh, sea bottom. So, in a way,、uh, the、uh, Having a license、uh, for scuba diving is、uh, the very essential for activities. But even if、uh, they don't have、uh, such a license, well,、uh, the, uh, they can come and、uh, join us. But、uh, the, the scuba diving、uh, the skill is、uh, the very important、uh, in our activity. So, in a way, that's、uh, a little bit special with our group. Turning to Mr. Kashimura, Engagement with young people and how you can develop young talent. Well, because our company is engaged in sustainability and environment related activities,、uh, there are many young job applicants. And、uh, as was mentioned earlier, we are a for profit organization, so that we have to make it at the Viable business and then make a profit and then return the benefit back to the society. And it appears that such a、uh, the, the proposition seems to penetrate into the minds of young people. So, first, to gain their understanding that this is a business, and then how we can、uh, make it profitable, and then、uh, make it a workable solution. So, in terms of education, environment, sustainability, of course, we. Give such education, but underlying concept is about the viable business. Thank you very much, Mr. Kashimura. Strategies to engage youth in supporting your business model?、Um, well, actually, in the business model, rather, I, I, I would like to say that I, I agree with something I find in the question that probably the change comes from a younger generation. Uh, not everyone has to be a Greta or something like that, but I think people should kind of、um, question things,、uh, be critical, and be loud. I mean, if you see something that doesn't work, that is not the right way to do it. 
you should stand up as a young person uh, and also as parents you should encourage that so this is not something that I can promote as a business but uh, it's more I think an attitude that should come from schools parents and, and everyone in the way we we handle resources and for me I'm, I'm a resource revolutionary and I'm inviting everyone to come to work for my company uh, for example I I found this one. It, it's a pet. Uh, sorry, it, it's a tetra pack of water. It's totally useless. It cannot be recycled. It has to be burned. Why? Because there is a plastic cap. You can remove the cap, and that can be recycled. But you also have the neck of the cap, and it's glued to there. You cannot separate them with any sorting technology. It has to be burned. So um, I'm, I'm sorry if that offends anyone, but, but I think this is the kind of thing everyone needs to think about. Are we doing this in the right way? Do we need it, first of all? Uh, is there a better way to do things? And that's how I, as a business person, like to see things, uh, different problems in, in business, but also how we affect uh, society and, and environment with the things that we do. Do we really need to go that extra trip to see that customer, for example, or you know all those kind of wasteful things? So, sorry, I don't really have a good way to integrate it in the business, but but I think you know at least for some of you um, to 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 uh, start helping spread the word and and the attitude about these kind of things. Thank you, Mr. Sodavag. Yes, we have to keep thinking uh, about what is best, uh, what is better. Uh, to do our uh, consumptions and uh, livelihood to make our uh, uh, business and uh, livelihood better for the environment as well. Uh, thank you very much. So there are no Sunny no panelist on Katanigatani. Imagine the Okina Hakshaw on it. Now, once again, we'd like to express uh, the uh, great appreciation to our three speakers. Thank you very much. Now we have come to uh, session three, ocean expedition and uh, research. Ocean expedition and the research. I have uh, uh, distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Gia Fuse, research director, Marine Ecosystems and Resources, Institute of Marine Research of Norway, who is speaking, I understand, from uh, Brian, uh, Norway. Um, Gea, are you ready? Can I invite you to take a floor? Yeah, uh, I'm ready. Uh, thank you very much um, for the invitation and for the introduction. Um, I just wanted to show some slides, maybe. Can you see them okay? Okay, yes, we can see your slide now. Very good. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, the one ocean expedition um, on board this magnificent uh, old sailing ship, uh, the Stasol Um And this um, expedition is uh, part of the uh, UN uh, Decade for Ocean uh, Science uh, for, for Sustainable Development. And uh, the goal of um, uh, the expedition is to create attention share knowledge about the crucial role of the ocean for sustainable development in a global perspective. Um, here we see the route that we're taking. We started last year in, in August from, uh, from Arendal in Norway, sailed across the Atlantic, and we now finished the whole Atlantic uh, part of, of this uh, voyage and are now outside uh, Chile, heading for uh, Valparaiso. <clears throat> so we will arrive in uh, Yokohama in, uh, in September, in the middle of September, and uh, continue our uh, Japan and Norwich, uh, Norway um, collaborations there. So um, as part of one part of this uh, expedition is to do research actually. So we, we've uh, converted this uh, sailing ship into a research vessel also, given the constraints of course that you have in a 107 year old sailing ship. Um, we fitted it with a scientific broadband echo sounder to study plankton and fish. We have a hydrophone, a microphone that listens for marine uh, uh, mammals um, and also noise, human-induced noise. We do a lot of water sampling of uh, environmental DNA um, for biodiversity studies, microplastics, also water isotope and uh, uh, CO2 uh, concentration studies for climate uh, studies. 
Um, and we also occasionally stop the vessel and lower a plankton net uh, into the water and a CTD to measure temperature. And we have also uh, atmospheric and wave height uh, sensors. Um, as part of the, uh, of the campaign in uh, Japanese waters, we will also deploy Argo drifters in collaboration with our uh, Japanese colleagues. Um, and this is a joint venture uh, of Norwegian research institutions, mainly in, in the Bergen area, and uh, headed by us at the Institute of Marine Research. And here's a list of uh, the, uh, the data instruments and measurements that we are making. And uh, the data are openly available at our uh, um, um, uh, data center. And here you see the, the uh, internet address and, and uh, the data is open for all to use. And we are uh, building now, now a data set as we go along. Um, I don't have time to show a lot of results. Um, we don't have so many results yet. We are meeting in, in June to, to work up the data for uh, the uh, Atlantic campaign. But just to show the, uh, the hydrophone, and this is a microphone uh, lowered into, uh, into the ocean at the uh, stern of the ship, and we tow it uh, around 200 meters after the ship. And of course, the silent sailing vessel is ideal for, for doing this kind of measurement. And this, this just illustrates this. Um, uh, here we see uh, when, when there's no engine running, uh, very little noise. Here we see the noise starting when the engine starts, even at 200 meter after. And here we see the increased noise level when the propeller kicks in. So it's clearly that when we're sailing, we're doing really good sampling. And here, um, the next uh, slide here is, um, yeah. Here we see uh, some, some real noise, uh, real uh, natural sound. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, probably not, but this is, these are dolphins that we, uh, we can hear um, and uh, we can count how many there are uh, likely and uh, what they're doing and which species there is. Um, and, uh, and of course, this is uh, building up to be a, a very nice global uh, data set uh, that uh, we will we'll look into and, and, um, and analyze in the years to come. So finally, just a, um, a glimpse of uh, life on board uh, this uh, uh, vessel. Um, this, uh, the science part is run by two students uh, on board uh, continuously, uh, on board for about two months each. And they do all the, the sampling. Um, and occasionally there are other scientists on board. And this is us. This is me sitting here in the, in the staircase. And uh, I was on board uh, from Bahamas via Miami to New York. Uh, great experience. We had meetings on board. Uh, we did the data collection and we discussed the data gathered so far. And in the harbors, we, we had uh, a lot of workshops and meetings to, uh, to discuss uh, the ocean and uh, possibilities and, and challenges and in relation to the, to the local. And that's, that's what we'll do in, in September in, in Japan to continue this, uh, this strong uh, Japan and Norwegian collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Ge, uh, for speaking early in the morning in Bergen, Norway. And uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you about how it is to uh, cruise with a research vessel to Bahama and New York and Atlantic. But we certainly look forward to welcoming you in Yokohama this summer uh, with Remku. And uh, yeah, look forward to uh, knowing more about your research expeditions. Sustainable Ocean Alliance Japan. I'd like to invite the, the next speaker, uh, Ms. Kokoro Watanabe, Sustainable Ocean Alliance Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I don't know, I'm not sure whether my topic, uh, the suits, uh, ocean expedition and uh, research, uh, represents Sustainable Ocean Alliance Japan. Well, uh, Japan is part of the name of my organization. Sustainable Ocean Alliance is headquartered in San Francisco, the United States. And Sustainable Ocean Alliance is uh, the world's uh, the largest youth uh, uh, leadership network for the ocean. Uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, chapters of the branches in 165 countries, and there are more than 5,000 youth uh, the leaders around the world come together. And uh, in 2020, two Japanese uh, started the uh, Japan chapter, uh, starting uh, the uh, SOA Japan branch. 
I'm not uh, one of these two uh, starters, but uh, I joined them uh, later. These are the core uh, main activities, uh, core learning and uh, core acting. Uh, these are the uh, primary uh, the, uh, principles of activities. And these are the, some of the uh, activities that we have done. The first, for example, uh, in Japan, we invite uh, the uh, various uh, the uh, the leaders uh, of uh, the ocean activities and uh, discussed uh, the ocean related activities and uh, also we had uh, the uh, this uh, the panel discussion with uh, discussing uh, the uh, with the participants in English and we collaborated with uh, the other groups and uh, we instead of uh, simply um, uh, learning uh, amongst us, uh, that we invite uh, the other people so that uh, the other people uh, cannot join us, even though they are not uh, our members, uh, they, and they learn together. Because of the pandemic, uh, COVID, uh, the, we needed to change our plans, but uh, uh, while diving, uh, the, uh, we uh, cleaned up, uh, we collect uh, the garbage in Hayama. And uh, I like this one. Uh, that is uh, uh, the social media hashtag campaign. See my see, hashtag see my see activities. So during the campaign period, uh, we collected uh, the, the hashtag, uh, the posting, and uh, depending on the total number we collected, uh, we uh, made the donations. And we have uh, the connections with the headquarters, and uh, uh, they provide the subsidies every year. And so we invite the uh, Japanese NPOs and the startups uh, to apply uh, for their uh, subsidies. So we support them uh, in preparing uh, the English uh, the, uh, application, uh, the processes. We would like to expand uh, our network and uh, expand our collaboration uh, with other partner organizations and other organizations. And uh, we expand our network, uh, not only in Japan, but also in uh, overseas. We have uh, the various uh, the, uh, programs uh, for the future. I'm looking for uh, the uh, supporter organizations. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Watanabe. Uh, in uh, 19, uh, 2019, our Ocean Conference in Oslo, uh, the SOA members uh, participated. And uh, in Apalao last week, our uh, OPRS for the A uh, provided the support uh, so that the 17 young people uh, they joined uh, the conference. And in total, uh, 27 young people uh, uh, came and uh, we provided uh, the financial support to 17 of them. And uh, in fact, uh, the uh, seven of them uh, uh, joined from Japan. And uh, we all uh, they recognize again the importance of uh, the uh, collaboration and coordination. Thank you, Kayatsu Hojin. Kayo. Next, we have with us a member of the group, a member of the JAMSTEC, Dr. Takashi Kikuchi. He is a director of Institute of Arctic Climate and Environment Research. Now over to you, Mr. Kikuchi. Sorry, the affiliation is so long. Our headquarters are located in Yokosuka, and we engage in various research activities there. As we're engaging the research on global environment, the, and we are working together with Norwegian colleagues on Arctic environment due to anthropogenic activities and global warming, we are seeing uh, the, the major impact, especially in Arctic region. They're often called a cannery and the coal mine. And that is a, one of the regions where the changes due to global warming is most strongly manifested. For instance, uh, this is uh, 
the average temperature deviation from 2017 to 2021, the reference period is uh, from 1951 to 1980. When the, uh, the global average is about one degrees increase, it could be three degrees or four degrees increase in the case of Arctic region. You see that the global warming is uh, most uh, the strongly advanced. And uh, this is a graph that shows that the chronological changes uh, ever since the time of the uh, the Industrial Revolution. You know that the, the Paris Agreement uh, stipulates uh, the, the increase should be limited to 1.5 degrees C. And uh, we see that the, the temperature increases right now 1 degree C, but uh, the change in water, uh, I mean the temperature increases three times more in Arctic region because of that. Uh, the permafrost, the glacier, are gradually melt, and uh, the ecosystem on land and at sea are changing, and uh, the atmospheric circulation is changing. Some say that the the environment in Arctic region has uh, already changed uh, with a completely different nature, and the question is. The, what happens if a global warming advances? And I believe uh, the Arctic region is a good indicator for global environment. And therefore, we use uh, the research vessel to measure the water, the air, as well as the plastics, uh, marine debris, planktons, among others. You see the photo of the uh, gemstick vessel called Arctic Ocean, but this is not the uh, icebreaker. The, it can navigate if the uh, ice is thin, but it, can, it doesn't have a capability to break ice. So it has been engaged in research in area without ice uh, as an indicator uh, for Arctic without ice. But of course, uh, when we try to come up with the uh, better projection, we also need to explore the area covered with ice. And finally, uh, thanks to the uh, government of Japan, in December 2020, the ice-breaking research vessel was decided to be constructed. The size is about the same as Mirai, a little bit wider. So the size is about the same. It is also capable of conducting uh, various research activities that are comparable or even better than Mirai. And if it is a flat ice of uh, about 1.2 meter thickness, and then uh, this is a polar class uh, three vessel so that it can navigate at three knots even with such a thick ice. And through collaboration with other countries, including Norway, we engaged in gathering data so that uh, we hope uh, we can explore what is happening in Arctic region, which was not covered by our research before. With that, uh, we will have uh, more information uh, to uh, have a projection about the Arctic region. We have been working together with Norwegian colleagues, but hope that we can work even closer with them. And now coming to the important part of uh, my presentation. Uh, in the back of the room, there, there is a monitor there, and uh, the tomorrow uh, there will be the uh, the model of the the new research icebreaker to be displayed tomorrow. And uh, with that model, we'd like to share with you what we are planning to do for research crews. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. K uh, Dr. Kikuchi. You shared with us uh, the various information, including display of the model uh, that will be uh, shown tomorrow. And also, we are looking forward to the beginning of the research in 2024. Now, I'd like to uh, ask some questions. Ask uh, um, Gay again to appear on the monitor. Maybe I have a question. Uh, one question that uh, you have uh, uh, described that so many items that uh, you have been monitoring for your ocean expedition and research. And I'm just wondering uh, whether and how you can actually draw a kind of lessons or learning from various research work. And are you making any recommendations or suggestions for 
policy changes uh, with regard to how we can achieve a sustainable ocean, how we can protect the ocean. Uh, can you uh, tell us a bit more about your views on this? Yeah, I am. Um, thank you. Uh, we we, uh, we have not analyzed a lot of the data yet, but the plan is, of course, to do so uh, as soon as we can. Some of the samples are still on board the vessel, uh, so we haven't gotten them back uh, home uh, from, uh, from the ship. But, uh, uh, for example, um, the uh, microplastic data set that we will uh, will get uh, from this is quite novel, and it's very rare to have such a global uh, scale data set uh, collected on the same method all through uh, the global ocean. And it's similar for for the hydrophone. While we we can get uh, data on the uh, the uh, occurrence of marine mammals, we will also get the human induced noise, and that that's also something that uh, is. Uh, coming to our attention that we are creating a lot more noise in the ocean now than we did uh, some decades back. So uh, clearly we will, uh, we will start by doing uh, scientific uh, papers uh, based on the data and, and we, we will get them a kind of global um, benchmark for how things are uh, in the different places in the ocean as a starting point for, for doing more uh, uh, advice uh, in relation to how we can uh, reduce our anthropogenic uh, impacts on the ocean, for example. Thank you. Um, so we certainly look forward to having uh, or listening to the outcome of your, re your research work. And I also recall that you have made a very interesting presentation on your research as to the fishery uh, management at uh, Oslo our Ocean Conference in back in 2019. So definitely um, your research work uh, has been supporting the Norway's high level panel for sustainable ocean economy that uh, we, our office also support. And we really look forward to continuing collaboration with you on this ocean research as well. Uh, now back to you, Ms. Kokoro Watanabe about Sustainable Ocean Alliance. As I was following your activities, I was really impressed with uh, the active involvement of the, uh, the Japanese youth, the uh, developer of Pirika uh, was uh, the one that was uh, involved recently. And uh, we really hope that we can also work together and learn from you uh, that are full of enthusiasm. As have you ever faced any challenges, issues in being engaged in various activities uh, here in Japan or in overseas? Among the young people, as I <coughs> sorry, as I heard from Mr. Sakamoto, the well, I'm. Uh, I know that now I'm in the job hunting season uh, in the senior year, and uh, because uh, I was somewhat at a loss as to what to do, uh, they I decided to suspend uh, my uh, the terms uh, for a while and then try to look into this question further because uh, the to be engaged in the environment related activities or to be engaged in ethical activities you have to have a kind of the uh the mind that is uh freed up not uh, too busy engaged in various activities and also so time available and also the language barrier uh, that is a major barrier for the japanese youth especially so uh, we are planning that uh, there may be a way to uh, promote uh, remote uh, the education so that uh, the Japanese youth can learn not only English, but also about environment and those activities. Thank you. I really encourage you to uh, be more active in those activities. And now next I have uh, the question to you, Mr. Kikuchi. Well, uh, the, uh, Jamstick. Uh, the, uh, of course, uh, the, I believe that uh, you are under pressure in order to produce results. Uh, in uh, the Arctic uh, the exploration, do you have any hypothesis that you have come up with? And uh, also, do you have a, I don't know whether uh, we can uh, the apply that globally, but uh, 
to have any idea as to how uh, you that produced results uh, that would be uh, the applicable or the useful uh, for uh, global uh, the uh, globally well uh, hypothesis well when we studied uh, activities uh, in Arctic, uh, Arctic uh, was covered with ice, so or that would be difficult to go there. And so the collection, the data collection was the primary purpose. Well, uh, with data, uh, we uh, started to study why there was ice there. But that uh, I started to recede. And while we were wondering why uh, global warming is continuing, uh, the ice uh, uh, continues to shrink. And then uh, by the disappearance of ice, what impact would we have as humans? And uh, uh, the, uh, what impact uh, would it have globally, not only in the Arctic region? With the reduction of the uh, ice in the Arctic, according to one uh, the hypothesis, uh, the, we, Japan, have the more uh, snow. So some of uh, the teleconnection uh, might uh, be there. So the uh, impact is not only not limited to the Arctic region. Uh, so now the our perspective is uh, the global. So what would it, uh, it what would be the impact on humans and uh, what uh, would the humans need to do or they can do? In response, but uh, there are still many uncertainties, and so. Uh, so that's why we started uh, having a new ship. Well, we researchers uh, are very uh, demanding. While we are doing what we do, we have more demands, uh, the, uh, new additional demands. Well, uh, if you allow me to make uh, the, uh, some uh, the comment, well, uh, we also uh, hope to increase our colleagues uh, working for uh, the Arctic uh, researchers. Uh, so I think uh, the we need to recognize uh, the career uh, the, as uh, the important uh, the, uh, the track record. Uh, the, so the uh, uh, career as uh, the, a young researcher uh, should be uh, well uh, recognized uh, so that uh, the, uh, our career as uh, the Arctic researchers would be uh, the properly uh, the duly recognized and respected as, uh, in the research community. In, and in society. Thank you very much, uh, the, uh, Dr. Kiguchi. I hope I wish uh, the, your further success. The, any question, feedback from the floor? Uh, anybody? Donata ka, nanka, kosmo to ka. Ikanas ka. Maybe a question to Yamstek, because it would be uh, it would be interesting to to hear a little bit more about how do you cooperate uh, and share data and research and knowledge with, for example, Norwegian partners or other international research communities so that you do, I mean, do you do uh, common research projects or do you share data and how do you, how do you do this in practice? Thank you. Uh, now, over to you, Dr. Kikuchi. Should I answer in Japanese or in English? Allow me to speak in Japanese. First of all, when we collect data, in principle, we share the data with the, uh, the, our colleagues, scientists. So it is an open data, open science policy. So if that is maintained, then uh, I think that is uh, eventually leading to international collaboration, contribution. And also, when I'm engaged in discussion with my peers from other countries, we find out uh, there are areas of common interest. So once we find out any area of common interest, then we would discuss further uh, to explore the possibility of joint collaboration project. For instance, recently, uh, from 2020 to 2022, Arctic Ocean study scientists got together and uh, they agreed on conducting the wide range ocean uh, research and monitoring 
And right now, uh, they, it involves um, the, the researchers, scientists from different countries to cover Arctic region. Due to COVID pan uh, pandemic, there is a delay in the plan, but uh, in case uh, something happens, uh, then those uh, scientists, like-minded scientists, would get together and then co consider what they can do. And now, uh, they once again I'd like to emphasize the principle of uh, sharing data. That is a principle. So based upon that, then we just want to consider what we can do for as a next step. Thank you very much, Dr. Kikuchi. Data sharing, that is important. And now to Dr. Gail uh, Huse and Dr. Kikuchi, uh, Ms. Watanabe, I would like to express appreciation by a big round of applause. Thank you for your contribution. So we have uh, completed uh, the three sessions uh, with uh, specific uh, themes. Now uh, it's time to uh, start uh, the concluding session. I invite first uh, Mr. Takashi Shibata, member of the Environment Committee of Japan Sailing Federation and director of the uh, Enoshima Youth Club, the, which uh, are the has uh, extended to us uh, the general uh, support, general support for this uh, ocean forum. As was introduced, I am Shibata, a member of the Environment Committee of Japan Sailing Federation and also director of Enoshima Yacht Club. On this occasion of 188th Ocean Forum, I am very much impressed and moved that uh, we are meeting here in Enoshima. I really enjoy discussion uh, by experts and scientists who shared with us the challenges, issues, and research topics. I'm not a specialist in environment, but as a sailor who loves ocean, I really thought this was a great opportunity to think about the ocean and environment. And Japan Sailing Federation is an organization that involves uh, sailing activities in Japan. And I am uh, the member of the Environment Committee. And uh, this uh, forum is taking place in conjunction with the Norway Friendship Yacht Race. For sailing uh, community, this is a great news because the sailing is uh, the sport activity uh, that considers a great or good environment is uh, so important to us. When talking about the sailing, you know that uh, the, we receive a wind uh, on the sail and then the, the ship or boat moves. And it was last year at the time of the uh, Tokyo Olympic 2020, the sailing events took place participated not only by the Japanese athletes, but also athletes from all over the world. Now that the yacht race is scheduled tomorrow, there will be more than 100 yachts, <coughs> excuse me, that will be joining uh, this uh, competition. And some of them are as young as eight or nine years old. And uh, there could be small boats as well as big boats and that will be joining the yacht race. In talking about sailors, they are so conscious about the environment because there is a rule in the sailing. Here is a rule book. And this is common to the sailing sector, sailing community. There are more than 100 uh, the principles. It's such a voluminous uh, rule book. And uh, there is the fundamental principle in the preamble before the Article 1. And uh, together with the sportsmanship and rules, the environmental responsibility is provided for as a very fundamental principle for the sailing competition. And here is a provision there. Participants are encouraged to minimize any adverse environmental impact of their sports of sailing. So if you violate this rule, then you will be disqualified. That means sailors are so conscious about the environment when they are engaged in competition. Thus, on the part of the Sailing Association, as we organize various races and events and competition, among others, for instance, 
Instead of pet bottle, we encourage sailors to bring their own bottle. And also, uh, they have to tie that bottle with a bottle holder so that it will not be washed away. And also, conduct uh, sustainability education. The idling stop stickers, the environment booklets for environment education, or beach cleaning activities at the time of the race. You know, the uh, yacht navigates because of the sail, and that sail is reprocessed into a bag, for instance. And during the competition, separating garbages and waste are encouraged, and also plant-derived lunchbox is used. And also, uh, because uh, the race takes place at sea, and then we also offer water supply uh, by utilizing the own bottles brought about by the the racers, uh, the sailors. As uh, the ocean lovers, uh, we hope that we would continue to work with you. And once again, thank you very much for a very informative and productive discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shibata. Well, uh, the uh, sailors uh, they are working not only for sailing, but also the, for the environment of the, sea, uh, the, of the sea. It's very impressive. Dr. Marianne Berg, a counselor, science, technology, and higher education, the Trade and Technology Office, Norwegian Embassy in Japan, to take a floor. Marianne, thank you very much. And um, konnichiwa, good afternoon and good morning for those of you following us from Norway. Uh, on behalf of Team uh, Norway at the Norwegian Embassy, um, um, I want to thank for very inspiring and very important contributions today uh, to the uh, dialogue on sustainability and healthy oceans. Uh, this kicks off uh, uh, the Sustainable Ocean Fest and also the anniversary of Enoshima Friendship Race, uh, the 20th anniversary. Uh, so it feels very good to be with the good fr ocean friends here today. Um, uh, and uh, we have not only been friends for 20 years, we have uh, had uh, seven, uh, all, the, all the time since uh, the first sailing ships came here in the 18th century, uh, taking part in international trade. Uh, this ocean has connected Japan and Norway as friends. So, uh, and since then our relations uh, have uh, developed in many ways. Uh, and today we have taken one step further uh, in this relationship uh, together for, for science and innovation and for the oceans. Uh, it's been mentioned we are in the decade of ocean uh, science. And we share the sense of urgency and the call for action towards uh, the UN Development uh, Goals number uh, 14 for healthy ocean. So at the forum today, uh, three important topics uh, have been covered. It's been quite a wide uh, range of topics today. Uh, first, the understanding and action to sustain uh, a healthy ocean that we love so deep uh, and also depend on in so many ways. And the second, the pressing uh, issues of uh, marine plastics. And finally, uh, how uh, ocean science and expeditions work uh, with uh, the climate issues. So uh, the many presentations together highlights the complexity of uh, what we are dealing with. Uh, it brings hope to see many research efforts taking on to this uh, with different uh, angles and also it brings hopes uh, to learn uh, about uh, learn from the companies that uh, take a truly uh, uh, circular thinking into the, the development of their business models uh, with uh, different uh, sustainable approaches. Sustainability is not a state that we will reach. It is, uh, we need to, uh, to be, uh, uh, it is a continuous and omnipresent approach uh, to how we live, how we do business, how we prioritize, how we make decisions, uh, how we creatively do research uh, and engage across science, uh, business, and other processes for societal change. 
the pandemic have uh, taught us uh, how important science is uh, for a resilient society. So looking forward, as friends, we uh, have to ask ourselves, how can we ramp up our efforts together uh, and even do more? Uh, do science deliver what is needed in 5, 10, 20 years? Uh, and young researchers, innovators and business developers, can we work diff differently? Can we share more? Can we uh, establish new platforms for open science and open innovation? Uh, and also, uh, do we need some new collaborations? We hope to continue these discussions in existing and new collaborations between Japan and Norway. Uh, and I want to invite you to the next upcoming opportunity again in September when One Ocean Expedition comes uh, uh, with uh, tall ship Stasjord Lemkul is docking at Yokohama, Naha and Ishigaki. So uh, we hope to see many of you there. And finally, thank you very much to Enoshima Yacht Club, Sasakawa Peace Foundation and o uh, Ocean Policy Research Institute for a great cooperation on this event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Marianne Berg, for your remarks and uh, underlining the importance of our uh, continuous collaboration between Japan and Norway for sustainable ocean. We certainly look forward to the further collaboration. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Dr. Hide Sakaguchi, director of uh, the OPRI Sasaka Peace Foundation, uh, the extent to you a closing remark. Thank you very much. Well, I started uh, the uh, Norwegian and uh, concluded uh, the in English uh, my opening remarks. So uh, let me uh, deliver my closing remark in Japanese. Well, because of the uh, urgent uh, the uh, business uh, that needs uh, my attention, I cannot uh, make it to the venue of uh, this forum uh, in uh, Enoshima. But uh, the, this uh, two-hour session was uh, the very short uh, for me. Perhaps uh, because uh, the uh, all of you have been uh, the uh, thinking uh, about uh, the ocean uh, so much, uh, so earnestly, so seriously, uh, personally or professionally uh, through industrial activities, and uh, as uh, Mr. Shibata uh, mentioned, uh, Dr. Shibata uh, mentioned. Uh, well, uh, the Mr. Shibata uh, mentioned, well, uh, the uh, sailing clubs of the world and of Japan believe uh, that, that uh, the uh, people uh, who cannot uh, the, uh, protect the ocean are disqualified uh, to uh, sail a boat. So you have been thinking about the ocean so deeply, as uh, the uh, uh, Marianne just mentioned. We cannot postpone uh, tackling these uh, the important issues uh, over, the, over the next uh, 10 years, 20 years, or the 50 years. We need to act now uh, so that uh, the, we can pass on our uh, healthy oceans to our uh, generations to come. We need to think and, and uh, do and act now. Uh, maybe we cannot stop uh, the uh, the process of uh, the global uh, the, uh, warming and now, but uh, we need to identify what uh, uh, we need to uh, do now uh, most. I think this uh, is an important uh, thinking process of the last two hours. Uh, today's uh, the theme and also the sustainability of uh, the uh, Sustainable Ocean Fest 2022. It's easier said than done. Well, in order to ensure sustainability, what do we need to do? Well, uh, the, uh, the many people uh, the, uh, talked about that. Uh, we need to uh, make it a part of a habit of it. Uh, we need to give incentives. We need to establish uh, the, uh, the business uh, the model so that, that we can make uh, the profitable contribution to uh, the society as our uh, speakers as discussed. Well, uh, think of it again. Uh, years back, 
Well, uh, the humans didn't have garbage or wastes, and uh, they, uh, they, they, they throw uh, the uh, wastes uh, they everywhere. Well, in Paris, for example, it's beautiful today, but uh, a little over uh, 100 years ago, uh, the uh, streets of Paris was uh, full of uh, the uh, litters uh, with uh, the uh, very uh, the little uh, sewage facilities or the water uh, tr uh, the supply uh, the facilities. Uh, but they started uh, the water supply and the sewage. And of course, uh, the uh, the ancient Romans had that uh, already, but uh, the such facilities uh, started to be established uh, in uh, the many uh, countries only uh, over the last hundred or years ago. Well, uh, the ocean is uh, too vast uh, uh, for a uh, single, uh, this small uh, the litter to be spotted or to be noticed uh, by humans. So it's easier for us uh, to uh, ignore it. But uh, it has become uh, the, uh, so uh, the, uh, critical. Uh, the, uh, well, so the uh, one of the speakers uh, the, had a very uh, the strong statement uh, that, that the, uh, there is no waste, uh, that everything is uh, their uh, resources for us. And I have uh, one request to you. Well, uh, in fact, two requests to you. One, uh, after uh, you leave this, uh, they don't forget what you have heard today. So tell your friends or uh, their families well, uh, tomorrow uh, the school is closed, the office is closed, the holiday. But uh, after that, after today's program, uh, they please share uh, with their families or their friends uh, what uh, the, uh, the impressed you most. And, and another request to you. I'm, unfortunately, I haven't been uh, with you physically today because uh, the I uh, couldn't, uh, the, uh, I wasn't being able to uh, make uh, new friends uh, today, but I'm sure you now uh, remember my face and uh, my voice. So please uh, remain uh, uh, connected. Uh, and I've heard that uh, the, uh, so many people have uh, they gathered today. So by the time you leave this hall, uh, please uh, the, use this opportunity uh, to uh, talk uh, with your neighbors, uh, chat with your neighbors uh, who share this opportunity today. So this is a uh, good uh, the, uh, uh, opportunity to uh, have uh, uh, to keep uh, connected uh, uh, with uh, people who share uh, this uh, the space and time today. So not only thinking about uh, the ocean, but also uh, we need to act. So it's time for us uh, to shift uh, from thinking to uh, action uh, phase. So I hope that uh, the, this uh, op uh, Today's forum has provided you an opportunity uh, to uh, do uh, one, two, or three, or even more things that are for sustainable uh, the ocean. We have uh, the events uh, not only today, but also uh, to, uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, uh, so let's work together uh, so that, that we can continue to enjoy and from the sea. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sakaguchi. The background, the wallpaper that you use, that was uh, Mount Fuji, that was uh, lit by the, the, the evening sun, and therefore I think that was also very impressive. So that added uh, to your memory that will remain in the hearts of all the participants. With this, we'd like to conclude the 188th Ocean Forum. Tomorrow, we have events in conjunction with the No Way Japan Sustainable Ocean Fest 2022. Please access the website of either Norwegian Embassy or Enoshima Yacht Club. You can also send your feedback uh, using a link in the bottom of the screen. The next Ocean Forum is scheduled in late May 
Uh, please access our website or uh, access the mail magazine. Thank you very much once again for your participation. Thank you. Maybe I just invite the uh, speakers to be on the podium to take a group photo. あの、ちょっとご登壇いただいた方にはあのグループ写真を撮らせていただければと思いますので、壇上の方にちょっとお集まりいただければありがたいと思います。